Hello, everyone. In uh, 2010, John McLuhan wrote one of my favorite blog posts of all time, showing how to use a chicken and Mathematica to do some spy stuff. A few years later, Mercedes-Benz marketed a new S-Class with a video starring it hen. My name is Johan Brugård. I'm the CEO of Wolfram MathCore. And today I will uh, take inspiration from the Mercedes-Benz video to illustrate some of the new features of System Modeler. Using the chicken, Mercedes-Benz introduced what they called the intelligent drive, magic body control for the S-Class. When you gently move around the hen, it has an amazing ability to maintain its head in a stable position. When building car suspensions, this is a quality you want to replicate. You want the wheels to follow the road perfectly and never lose grip, while the car body should feel stable and comfortable. To achieve this, you can use a smart mechanical solution or some intelligent control system. Whichever solution you, you go for, system modeling is an essential tool in the design process. I will come back to that later, um, but first let me go through some of uh, the additions we've done in uh, system modeler and system modeling during the last year. I will uh, mention some libraries, uh, system modeling in the cloud that I know Steven mentioned in his uh, talk and uh, then things that are in system modeler itself. So uh, let's start with libraries. Uh, we launched uh, a couple uh, new versions of OPC Classic and Model Plug in December, 2020. Then in February, we released a completely new library, Business Simulation Library, um, which as the name says, is used for business simulations. And by the way, whenever you see red ones here, if you have downloaded the, the, um, the presentation, that means there's a link, so you can go there and read more about that. So here's the blog, for instance, about the Business Simulation Library. Then in June, uh, we released a new virtual lab called College Digital Electronics. Uh, and um, very soon we will have yet another one, College Mechanical Engineering. I will not spend uh, that much time on libraries today. Um, what I will mention later on a bit about is uh, system modeling in the cloud. So this was something we released uh, in Wolfram Cloud 1.59 of old versions. Uh, so I will get back to that. And then in System Modeler, uh, we are now with 13, which is releasing soon, including uh, the Fluid Library, uh, which is um, probably the largest uh, modeling library we have added to System Modeler ever. Uh, this, uh, for this, we have a specific presentation tomorrow by my colleague Anket Naik. So I will not um, talk too much about that today, but I'll recommend his talk tomorrow. What I will show is uh, from, from um, uh, the 12, 3 and 13 is uh, a bit of how we can uh, better uh, customize uh, model plots. Uh, but my main focus will be on streamlined creation of controlled systems. And that takes me back to the chicken uh, and the car. If we look at the chicken and the car, at first sight, they are, of course, uh, very different. But here you see I'm saying that, stating that they are approximately similar. And in, in a sense of, of how the control could or should work, uh, they are actually quite similar. We have um, the hen trying to control its head and the car trying to control the body. In order to do this, um, we could basically, uh, or design a control system for this, we could basically describe uh, the head of the hen or the body of the car like as one mass and uh, the body of the hen 
or the wheels of the car as another mass, which are then connected through a suspension system in the, uh, in the case of the car and the neck in the case of, the, of uh, the chicken. And these are sort of, could be described as spring damper systems. So I will focus on the car now, and I will put the camera on top of it. So we have the same system here. This was representing the wheels, the car, and the camera. And on the right-hand side here, we see a corresponding 1D translation and model uh, in System Modeler. So the reason why I just use 1D is that we're looking at the movement up and down, in this case only. Uh, to simplify our task a bit. And that's also, of course, the most important um, uh, aspect for stabilization. So between the camera and the car, we have a mount. And in the case of the chicken, it would have been the, the neck. And the chicken would have used some, uh, used its muscles to control the neck, of course, and, and, and do this and has some sort of intelligent control system in order to be able to maintain uh, the head in a stable position, which is what we now are trying to do with a car and a camera on top of it. I also added here um, a spring damp system for the wheels, which is the elasticity of the wheels, because of course these also absorb some of the, uh, of the uh, vibrations from the road. Let's uh, open this in uh, System Modeler. There you go. So here we have the model. Um, we can see it's the same as I showed in the presentation. And there are some hidden things here that I have prepared. And I can see there's some bug here uh, with big text. Never mind. Um, still will work, I hope. Um, so uh, um, I have prepared this so I can configure this model and add a road. Hopefully you can see this, but it's basically a Boolean variable that's set to true. And I activate these components here. These components describe a road profile that includes some speed bumps and some holes. And based on that, we will have a contact point. So we drive in the car at some velocity along this road which will give us a contact point for the wheel at every point in time. And the spring damper of the, of the wheels, I have added a gap also, so we can lose uh, contact with the road. And then we have the system that I just described. For uh, the design of the controller later on, we will also need some sensors uh, to measure different things. In this case, we're measuring the relative distance between the camera and the car and the relative distance between the wheels and the car. So these are the two things that, uh, that we will use later on for designing the controller. But before we do that, let's look at how this system works. So I'll simulate it. And immediately a model plot appears. And here we can see actually one of the new features uh, that can now annotate and save with uh, plot markers that show, if I open here a bit, we can see better, they show specific values at, at the different markers. But we also call, uh, have names for them here. So here is holes one. So it's the, the first section with holes, which you can see here, the purple is the road profile. So here we have a bunch of holes. And here it says bumps. We cannot really see them here. I'll get back to that. And then we have more holes and, and, uh, and bumps. So we have five sections of holes and five sections of bumps in this case. We also have an incline here of about, uh, I think it's 5% incline or something like that, uh, on which the, the car is coming. And we can see here that when we start going upwards, the camera takes some time before it follows, of course, because of the spring damper on it. 
And then when we reach the top, it will continue upwards because of the inertia and spring dampers again before it sort of goes down and stabilizes until we hit, uh, come to the road where it looks like pretty good here. But we look a bit closer to that. We can see actually that we get some sort of, after all these uh, segments of holes, there is some uh, minor uh, vibration of the camera. We can look at other things like the actual force acting on the camera. So the force is around 10 newtons. Um, the, the, of course, the, 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 we have the weight of the camera itself, which is 10 kilos, but then depending on the bumps and, uh, and, uh, and profile of the road, we will have additional forces. And in this case, we can also actually also see the bumps. So this is the bump, bumpy section. Right, so these are bumps. It's basically like those white lines that are painted sometimes on the road to, to slow, down, slow you down. So that's what I'm trying to model there. So here we have that system um, with the forces. And we can also look at the force on the wheel. And this is a bit interesting because now what we can see is um, whenever we get to these uh, segments with holes, and I'll see that better if I zoom in, we actually have a force of zero newtons, meaning that we lose traction between the, the wheel and the road. Um, and then um, it hits uh, on the other side of the hole and we get a, a spike here of a force, which probably isn't that nice when you're driving. Okay, so that's uh, how the system works. Now, what we wanted to do was design a control system. Um, of course, we want to design a control system that works for any type of road, not just this particular one. So we won't use this road for the design of the controller. I will disable that and instead go back to the spring damper where I can apply any force that I sort of want to do during the design process. But I also will need this uh, actuator here uh, to be able to um, control the camera mount. So I enable that and now I'm ready for the design work. Going back to my presentation and here we have the same plots uh, that I just showed, but in the notebook. Now, uh, the first thing you want to do is to linearize the model. Uh, and that's done with a function called system model linearize. And we have the model here that I'm, I'm working with called suspension control. So I do that. And once that's evaluated, we will see a state space model representing the system. There we go. Let's not go into details of this, but it's basically a linear representation of the model uh, in a state space form. But what we can um, actually, what, what would be interesting to look at um, is, um, let's see if I can scroll down here for some reason, can't, is to compare, there you go, compare how the original model behaves and how the linearized version. So, here in Mathematica, I take the original model and I apply to the wheel, I apply a step function, and then I'll plot the movement of, a, of the camera and the car. So this is it, okay? So we can see there's some movement. We don't care too much about the details right now, but we see that they are affected by the, by the, by the bump. Then I do the same, but with a, linear suspension control model. So it's the same force. And if I do this, we can easily see them that they are actually replicating the behavior well. So the linearization that was yes, done seemed to work very fine for, for this situation. So now with the linear uh, model available, we are, um, 
ready to uh, select a, design the controller. First step is to select which type of controller you want. Uh, the Wolfram language comes with uh, controllers for state feedback and output feedback. And as you can see, there are a few uh, different kinds in, in uh, both these cases. And in this case, I will work with the estimator regulator game. I won't go through the details, but there will come a blog uh, later on that, that shows uh, and, and discusses more about the technical details here. But nevertheless, uh, we now want to design the estimator. The first thing I'll do is to get the state variables from the system. So we look at that and we see that it's the camera, position of the camera is the first one and the velocity of the camera is the fourth one. And as is said, it's the camera that we want to control and maintain stable. What we will do is to create a penalty matrix that puts a big penalty on the, on the position of the camera and the velocity of the camera. So these, if these two are far uh, are, 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 are bad, then, then we get a big penalty and the controller tries to, to adjust for that. We, um, as I said, we will uh, use, we, we can start here using an LQ regulator and uh, we do that using this linear model that we did. So I'm not going through the details here, but let's skip forward a bit and see that we do a few things here, looking at the closed loop system, taking those, the poles and so on in order to implement uh, an estimator that we can use. So here we have our calculating the estimator gains and up here, the controller gains. So once we calculate these gains, uh, we can now create the complete system. That is done with estimator regulator, which takes our original model. So now we're not any longer working with a, with a linear version. We say, okay, let's, let's use the suspension control model as our input model. And uh, then feedback inputs to the camera mount. So this is what we try to control, right? using the parameters that we just calculated here. Okay, so that's, that's a, a, a quick uh, run through what we, um, of, of how, the, how the system is uh, created. Um, and then we create the, actually we generate the closed loop system also. And I will call that model closed loop system. So this means that without having to do connections, we can look at it in system modeler. And this is what has been created for us. The estimator, uh, the controller, a force input, and so on. If I double click on this, we can see that this is the model that we were working on before. Now I want to test it with the road. So I set the row to true. Um, and I will need, still need the outputs here because I, I will be using the controller and I will need the mount here to feed that back in. So uh, we'll go back here to the model. The, the force now will come from the model of the road and the contact with the wheel. So I'll remove that input. And then we can set a what type of movement do we try to accomplish uh, or, or force do we want to have um, acting typically on our camera? What I will do is to set that to, so it tries to have, keep it at zero Newtons, meaning in balance. So we connect that to the comparator here and that goes in. So now I have a system that I can test with, uh, with my, uh, to see how well the controller works. So let me set 30 seconds here before I simulate. I think that's good. Mm 
there you go. So we simulate it, we get it in experiment browser. And in this new workflow, not only did we create, uh, connect the, the controller automatically to the system, we also added predefined plots, model plots that we can click, for instance, the output response for the Delta cam and the Delta car. And we can see how they behave here, how much they move. It doesn't tell us that much if we don't compare it with, with something and we can compare it with how it worked before. So I go to the first simulation where we simulate it without, uh, with the same uh, road, but without controller. I plot the camera position and now we can see that it moved a lot more uh, before we did added this controller to the mount. And we can look, we can see here that the car on the other hand moved basically the same, which is expected. So pretty cool, right? Um, okay, so um, returning to my notebook here, this was fast and I promised that I should mention uh, system modeling in the cloud. Uh, and I will. Uh, what I've done is um, here, uh, I published the presentation. You can take your mobile phone and scan the QR code here. That will take you to the Wolfram Cloud or basically to this page here where you will have this presentation notebook um, up in the cloud together with a script which contains sort of what I said during this presentation. I'm not very good at following scripts, uh, but it gives you this story. And you can also, if you have a ball from, if you don't have an account, you will be able to view it and read it. But if you get an account, you can also actually um, uh, make your own copy and evaluate the different uh, inputs and get the results within the notebook. And of course that works on the mobile phone as well. So uh, welcome to try that. Scan this code with your mobile and go go uh, have some fun. This was really fast uh, as always, 20 minutes goes fast or 22 something, I guess I uh, probably done, I haven't checked. Um, we have more presentations uh, in just one hour. There's a presentation uh, on narrative processes for learning in Mathematica and System Modeler. I will certainly attend that one. Then tomorrow there is a first one, uh, um, and this are, as, is Central Standard Time, uh, college education using virtual labs, um, modeling fluid dynamic systems, and an office hour uh, on system modeling. And then on Friday, Friday, we have the virtual labs in education. So if you download this notebook from Pathable, or go to the cloud version that I just linked to, you can, uh, uh, you, you can find more information about these. And finally, uh, before I leave for a quick Q&A, uh, there will also be a social bike ride, which I'm leading tomorrow. So for those of you on Swift uh, that want to socialize with uh, boyfriend colleagues, I will be leading this. Um, and uh, I just had to show these pictures of uh, we're sponsoring the local team here in, in uh, Linköping. And this year we have the Swedish champion in male and women, both now for one year to come riding in Wolfram uh, jerseys. So with that, I'll leave for questions. Let's see here if we have any. Perhaps uh, I can get some help from uh, Darren. Do, have you found any questions that you think I should answer? Uh, the only question we've seen so far is Someone asked, uh, can you use the system model and Wolfram Mathematica? Uh, yes. You already uh, answered that a little bit. Perhaps you'd like to go into more detail. Yes. So, so um, you, the system modeling, you can use that in, in mathematics. And that's, I'm running here. So, so as you could see, most uh, I, I have in this presentation, I ran most of it in system model, the, the, um, the plots and so on. But here you can see, for instance, uh, Mathematica bit of code, and you saw the control design also to uh, get the plots out here. Um, so it's, it's integrated 
the graphical user interface, though, that's separate from Mathematica. So if anyone has any other questions, please type them into the path of the chat area and uh, Jan can uh, address them. So um, while uh, while waiting for more questions, yes, uh, put the schedule here of, of, of talks again uh, that you can expect. Um, this one, first one, I, I actually don't know anything at all about, so um, I, I can't tell you really what it will be more than, than the title. Um, the College uh, uh, Education Music and Virtual Labs will be a professor from, uh, from uh, Italy, Matteo Fasano, who will talk about his experiences. Then, as I said, Ankit Naik will present the Fluid Library. And during the office hours and virtual uh, meetups, you will be able to meet me, Ankit Naik, and other colleagues too to discuss ideas, uh, wishes, uh, have questions and so on uh, about system modeling in system model itself in Mathematica or on the cloud. Any other questions or do we wrap up there? I uh, think there was that, a follow up about yeah. someone who wanted to know what the difference between the system model, a standalone application, and Wolfram Mathematica is. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so that's a good question. So, the, the, the difference is this one here. Uh, and this environment, the drag and drop environment to put things together, that's system modeler. Uh, just as uh, this graphical user interface to get a system where we can click and plot your different variables, that's also system modeler. So these things are system modeler. You can build up the models and, and plot and graph and do graphs of them. Um, you can't do that uh, graphically in Mathematica, but you can do that coding in textually. You can build up your models, which works for smaller models, but for big models, it's typically quite uh, a lot of effort and harder to maintain. But what you can do in Mathematica very well is the plots and all sorts of analysis and design, like what I show now, the control design. So the, the, for the graphical user interface, the system modeler, for all the sort of uh, analysis and design power, Mathematica. And both work standalone from each other. So you can have a, you can have a Mathematica installation and run the models, it will work just fine, just as on the cloud. Uh, no problem, um, as long as you have the model. And you can run System Modeler uh, without having Mathematica. But if you have both, you can do what I did right now, sending models back and forth between the different environments. Any other okay. questions coming in? Yeah. I don't see any. So then I think uh, that's mind, it. I wanna thank you very much for a fascinating yeah. presentation. Thank you, uh, and uh, thanks for attending. See you in some other talks, I guess. Bye-bye.